Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be talking about NGONs, their problems, and why you should avoid them, and then I'm going to show you guys how to find them and how to fix them pretty easily. And most people I think have heard of NGONs, that's usually the most common talked about problems you encounter when you're doing quad modeling, organic modeling, or hard surface modeling. In general, you want to keep your model in uh, quads or tries, so four-sided or three-sided. Generally, quads are more accepted, I think. In, in hard surface modeling, usually tries are okay because there's less deformation. And if you're importing it into a game engine, usually the model will be turned into triangles anyway. But as a general rule, I think, especially with organic modeling, you want to keep your model all in quads. So right now I have this male base mesh loaded up, and I'm just going to show an example of of how N-Gons look. So it's any polygon with five or more sides, N be being a substitute for any number five or higher. So if I select, this model's all in quads. If I select one of the edges and hit Control Delete, this poly here will be an N-Gon. And you, th obviously this looks pretty obvious because of the way uh, the polys are set up in, in grids, but sometimes NGONs can hide in less obvious spots and it can be a little bit tricky to find them. So the reasons you would want to avoid this, firstly, if you have an NGON on an area that's deforming, if you had an NGON, say, like here in the middle of the crux of the elbow or on the shoulder area, it could cause really buggy geometry as the model deforms. And uh, you, you could see jagged edges or fastening uh, if he were to, say, raise his arm or bend at the elbow if he had end guns there. So generally, you really want to avoid it. I guess there are instances where you could use end guns. Uh, secondly, besides deforming, subdividing your model. So if you were to smooth this model out, add, add, add a series of divisions, Maya would become confused about how to then subdivide this because generally when you're subdividing, each quad gets divided into uh, four, so split into four quadrants. And if you have uh, an N-Gon with one, two, three, four, five, six sides, it won't be able to split that evenly. All right, and then the last real big reason why you don't want N-Gons is, depending on what your shader is, uh, it, you can have really strange results when rendering if you have N-Gons. And generally what happens is you'll, you'll have a big flat space and it'll be shinier and won't match with the rest of the model. So if I were to go in here and keep deleting edges, you can already kind of see how it's becoming uh, non-planar and, and stretching, where, whereas this should be a flat surface. So if you were to render this, it, it, it would look a little funky. And if you were attached like a shiny material, say, it would look really strange, especially at an angle. And definitely something you want to avoid because it will cause render errors. It can cause a, an extraordinary amount of time to be wasted. So better to just get your model right beforehand and keep it all in quads or quads with very little tries and... Uh, you, you'll be set further on down the pipeline. It's always good to have a strong base foundation of your model. So let me show you the easiest way to find an NGON. Select your mesh in object mode. Go over up to mesh, clean up, click the little option box here. And for this example, I'll say select the matching polys. This is usually what I do because when it cleans it up, it usually just converts it all to tries. And then you have to go in and delete if you want it in quads. And to check for NGONs, you just select fixed by tessellation faces with more than four sides. If you want it to be all in tries, you could click four-sided faces. 
And this is also a way you can check for non-manifold geometry as well. But today we're just checking for end guns. And then you say clean up and it'll select those faces. Now if it's, an hit, if it's in a hidden part of your model and you're not really sure where it is, hit the W key and you'll pull up the move tool and then that will be centered around whatever poly is with, you know, whatever Engon polys you have. Now, if you've got multiple Engons in your model, this trick doesn't work as well because if you had an Engon, say, up here, delete, and then I went back to mesh, clean up. It selects both faces, but then this move tool is centered between them. So you might have to go digging if your model is filled with end guns. You're just going to have to go looking for the highlighted faces. As you narrow them down, it'll become more apparent w where they are using this uh, the move tool trick. All right, so how to fix them? Pretty simple. Obviously, these are the most basic end guns, and we, we can see how they just used to be in the polys in our grid, so it's a little bit easier, but this is the general idea of how to fix them. Uh, come down to your modeling toolkit, and I use the multi-cut tool. Select the vert, the first vert, and then select the second vert, and hit enter. Uh, and then it will create an edge in between the two verts. And just to demonstrate one more time, hover over the vert when it when it shows up red, hit enter, and it'll insert a, an edge loop in between the two verts. And then if I go back into object mode, hit mesh, clean up, it'll deselect the mesh, and no uh, faces will be highlighted because there's no end guns. So that pretty much covers everything as far as end guns are concerned. Obviously it can get a lot more complicated than this, but I just wanted to go over the basics in this video, and hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, please leave me a like, and if you have any questions about anything I went over, uh, you know, leave a comment down below, and I'll catch you in the next one.